So good day to all. My name is uh, Jose Alves. I am a, a software developer at Transvalor. And today I will uh, talk about the advancements in the simulation of magnetic pulse forming process within Forge. During this talk, uh, I will present the activities of uh, Transvalor, who we are and our technological offer. Then I will introduce the different topics. Uh, I will introduce different topics related to electromagnetic processing of materials, among which we find the magnetic pulse forming process. And uh, the main content of the presentation will focus around improvements and extensions uh, done on our solvers in order to enable uh, more complex uh, process simulations. So uh, Transvalor is a software provider for the manufacturing industry. The company was founded in 1984. We are today located in the Technopoly of uh, Sophie Antipolis in the south of France. Our cutting edge technology is developed in tight collaboration with uh, CMF, the Center for Material Forming, which is a laboratory uh, of uh, Min Paritech. This uh, relationship ensures uh, a continuous investment in research and a rapid transfer of technology from academia to industry. We are today present around the world thanks to our network of uh, certificated providers from the US uh, with Transfer Americas all the way to Japan. Today, more than 500 companies around the world uh, trust uh, Transvalor. Uh, and also we work with uh, several universities uh, around the world as well. Today we have an offer of seven simulation software among which the most well known is Forge dedicated to uh, forming of solid state matter and it's two uh, brothers cold form and sim heat which are dedicated to cold forming applications in the first case and heat treatments uh, for the second case. Uh, then we have uh, Turkus for CFD and fluid structure mechanics dedicated to casting and foundry applications. Transweld, uh, our latest software dedicated to joining and welding. Digimu, spe specialized on microstructural evolution. <clears throat> and finally, REM3D, dedicated to plastic and foam uh, injection molding. So uh, electromagnetic processing of materials is a branch of the material processing technologies that focused on taking advantage of an electromagnetic wave to manipulate the properties of materials without a direct mechanical contact. Uh, but uh, the, um, the material is manipulated using eddy currents and uh, thus uh, transforming the energy within the electromagnetic wave into uh, kinetic and thermal energy. One of the most uh, widely used technologies within this family is the induction uh, heating process. Another application uh, is uh, within casting operations, the electromagnetic steering arm and braking. And a, a less known but emerging process is uh, the magnetic pulse forming, uh, which belongs to the family of high speed forming process. In here, the objective is to use the Lorentz forces to deform at very high speeds uh, a solid metallic part. This can be done um, thanks to the large magnetic fields created during uh, an impulse signal that last less than 100 microseconds typically but that can reach values uh, between 80 and 100 uh, Teslas. In order uh, to tackle this seemingly different process, we have developed a robust multi-physical framework in which uh, we have dedicated and performance solvers for managing each physical phenomena, from the electromagnetism to heat transfer and the mechanics, as well as uh, metallurgy. So um, the magnetic pulse forming process enables creating the mechanical join, uh, enables creating mechanical joints uh, and also uh, welding between the similar materials. The process uh, takes advantage of uh, high speed uh, reach by the parts in order to uh, achieve permanent plastic deformation with almost to non-elastic spring back. 
for welding applications, uh, it can be considered as a cold weld. Since the bonding between surface happens mainly because of a force exchange of electrical bonds at the surface level. One of the key interests in high speed forming uh, is that uh, at uh, the strain rate levels, since in this process, many alloys present a modification in their formability. This is typically the case with uh, aluminum and magnesium alloys that are typically difficult uh, to form because they have low formability range. So how everything works? Uh, first, uh, a certain amount of energy, somewhere between five kilojoules, 20 kilojoules, uh, depending on the application is stored in a capacitor bank. Then this energy is released uh, on a, a coil that is uh, placed close by uh, the workpiece, generating uh, an in, intense magnetic uh, field. From here, eddy currents arise in the part, uh, and then uh, the Lorentz forces appear. From here, the forming is achieved uh, due to the transformation of the energy into kinetic and plastic uh, energy. And uh, for welding applications, uh, past a given uh, velocity threshold at impact, uh, it is possible to uh, create a weld between uh, the parts. Now, uh, I will introduce um, some of the novelties uh, we have developed uh, in the latest version of Forge related to material modeling and its implications for uh, magnetic pulse forming. Since uh, several years, we have established a close partnership with uh, Santa Software, providers of uh, GMAT Pro, which is a digital material data library that enables defining physical and rheological properties uh, from the chemical composition of uh, a large range of alloys. We have worked uh, extensively with them in order to include not only the thermomechanical properties, but also the electrical and magnetic properties for several materials. This enables a faster design to production time, given that uh, in many cases, the material data is not well known or roughly known at the beginning of uh, a process design stage. Also, uh, since uh, magnetic pulse forming is usually used uh, for thin metal parts, Forming limit diagrams are a very useful tool for assessing quality of the final product, which is done by uh, analyzing the surface uh, strain state. Having uh, the change in formability limits in mind, I implemented in Forge the capacity of uh, introducing FLDs, which are uh, temperature and uh, strain rate dependent. When first introducing this technology in Forge, I was confronted to the fact that uh, most of the works found in literature regarding numerical simulations with FLDs are done on shell elements. Since Forge is dedicated to bulk forming uh, and the needs of our customers were to enable such analysis, but at the same time perform detailed study at the bulk of the material, I developed uh, or introduce a technique to project the strain field, computed uh, the volume points to the surface of the 3D model. This enables then approximating the same analysis done uh, with uh, a DIC system in which the surface strain field is captured by high speed cameras and then transformed locally into a principal strain representation from where the FLDs are created. With uh, these tools at hand, it is now possible to simulate with Forge uh, sheet metal forming applications with uh, fully 3D elements and easily compare the results with uh, classical tools used for shell elements, such as a thickness uh, distribution, principal strengths at surface, and of course, the evolution of the FLDs. This opens the door also for integration with uh, damage models, which are intrinsically 3D phenomena and that are already available within our models library. I will now change of uh, subject to introduce um, the developments done at the core of the electromagnetic solver. For those familiar with uh, numerical methods and especially uh, time integration techniques, 
A common issue is finding a robust uh, method that guarantees not only convergence in the numerical sense, but also convergence with respect to what could be called a real solution. One of the most famous methods in literature for time integration is the runge kutta family, which is typically applied to explicit representation of the partial differential equations. Since we have chosen to develop all of our solvers using implicit resolution, we needed to find a different method that enables the best possible convergence with minimal added algorithmic uh, complexity. An excellent compromise uh, was uh, a method developed back in the 90s and already used in our thermal solver. It is an, an asynchronous time integration method that enforces equilibrium at an intermediate time step and that uses two previous time steps for propagating the evolution of the state field. It actually creates a family of methods among which we can find the Euler implicit and crank nicholson methods, but its most robust version comes with the DuPont implicit methods, given by a specific combination of the numerical parameters. Here is a simple example showing for one test case, the convergence of the active store power in the electromagnetic field for different discretization levels of the time step used for solving Maxwell equations. It can be observed that the dopamine implicit method give almost the same results with a time step of 0.1 uh, microseconds and with a one microsecond when compared to the Euler implicit, in which uh, the difference is uh, more uh, evident. This implies a higher level of uh, truthworthiness in the results, even for coarser uh, time steps. The following topic is related to information transfer of solvers uh, between the solvers. Uh, for numerical com computations in which uh, it is dealt with uh, several mesh representations of the same physical domain, one key point is field transport methods. This is typically the case with uh, forming applications in which the geometry suffers large deformations and in such an heterogeneous manner that any mesh would be distorted to the point of making it useless numerically speaking. It is also the case for multi-mesh representations such as uh, our approach in which the electromagnetic problem has a mesh independent of the thermomechanical one. We realized that the most time consuming step in field transport was during the creation of the search uh, structure that enables mapping elements of a target mesh to the source mesh. Also, we had in mind that field transport is a delicate step that can introduce numerical diffusion to the results. Keeping these two points in mind, uh, we develop a transport library in which several methods can be used for building up the search, uh, the search up, uh, structure, among which the most efficient one was the uh, lo logarithmic uh, octrace. We introduce as well the possibility of uh, filtering uh, in unnecessary elements, in this case, for instance, the air elements, as well as uh, dedicated transport methods for different kinds of field data to minimize the uh, numerical data diffusion. In this example, it is shown uh, the gain of performance with uh, novel developments on a magnetic pulse forming example. The electromagnetic mesh is composed of more than uh, 1.3 uh, million tetrahedral elements, while the uh, thermomechanical mesh has more than 200,000 uh, elements. This computation uh, was uh, run, run on four CPUs of a local workstation. And so let's take uh, as a reference the CPU time used for uh, evaluating the first electromagnetic uh, time step. So about 10 minutes. It is observed that uh, the data transfer from the electromagnetic solver to the uh, mechanical solver, mean the Lorentz forces, for instance, and the joule heating term uh, took before in, in the previous version uh, around three minutes, and we reduce it to five seconds uh, from the mechanical uh, solver to the electromagnetic solver. We went from 26 seconds to two seconds, and if the uh, 
electromagnetic mesh needed to be uh, recreated because of the deformation. It implied that uh, we needed to recover the previous uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, field. Then here also we are talking about uh, four minutes that go uh, that diminishes to 15 seconds. So this shows that uh, in the latest version, uh, in the previous version, sorry, uh, in the worst case scenario, communication could take almost as much as a single uh, electromagnetic increment. Well, now it takes less than 3% of this uh, CPU time. So uh, one of the key points is that, uh, so for these uh, transport operations, the CPU time depends highly on the source mesh uh, but also uh, all of these developments are now the default behavior of the latest version. And uh, it doesn't need any integration from the final user of the software. The last topic uh, deals with uh, automatic uh, time stepping. It is a little bit less numerical than the previous one and has consequences on the type of process uh, that we can simulate. When I first introduced uh, magnetic pulse forming in Forge back in uh, 2016, uh, a strong hypothesis was required. Basically that the time step used for the electromagnetic solver and the mechanical solver had to be the same in order to properly update the electromagnetic mesh with respect to the deformations computed on the mechanical side. This restriction implied the need for very small time steps. When dealing with uh, impact uh, mechanics, the time step piloted by the contact algorithm and the mechanics needs to descend, uh, to descend quite low. But on the electromagnetic side, this is not a necessity. Now we have modified the update paradigm in order to uh, free the mechanical solver from this constraint uh, and thus enabling uh, automatic time stepping to manage impact uh, conditions. As I mentioned at the beginning, one of the most uh, interesting cases is uh, welding applications. Well, when dealing with uh, impact welding, uh, today most of the experimental works uh, focus on determining uh, what are called welding windows, which enable defining whether the surface are welded or not as a function of the relative velocity just before impact and also the angle between both surfaces. It is an open research field. And uh, one of the key questions is uh, how do these uh, process variables, the velocity and, and the impact angle transform into uh, the thermodynamical variables, temperature and pressure, and then also to develop empirical models that can quantify not only weldability as a binary state, but also the quality of the weld as a function of the thermodynamic history and the material properties modification. In order to open this door uh, from the simulation uh, standpoints, uh, we started by simply enabling the simulation of the forming process without taking into account any welding criteria. So this uh, was done thanks to the automatic time stepping. Next, uh, we introduced the possibility of enabling surface to surface welding as shown in this example. We simply enable an instantaneous uh, weld as shown here. Uh, during contact. And one of the interesting results here is that actually the behavior at the tip of the flyer uh, in a real MPW process resembles more the results to the left here. <clears throat> because the tip of the flyer has an attack angle that is too pronounced. So a bounce back is expected. This shows the importance of properly defining a criterion that shows us which points uh, at the interface do actually weld. So we are currently pursuing a research activity in order to introduce such uh, welding windows as user-defined models. So uh, to conclude, uh, I have shown uh, the developments regarding material, uh, material modeling. Thanks to the interoperability with GMAT Pro, we can use a large material database, um, even when we have no information of the material of interest. We have introduced the FLDs um, for uh, 
thin uh, metal uh, forming. Also uh, improvements to the solvers regarding either time integration, making uh, the electromagnetic resolution more robust and the communication between the different solvers and also the capacity of doing uh, impact forming and welding applications. So if you have any questions, it will be my pleasure to uh, try and answer. <laughs>